Yes, Lord. Those two words go together, don't they? Because if we don't say yes to him, he's not our Lord, is he? No, Lord, those two words don't mix. Yes, Lord. So thank you, choir, for that sermon. <laughs> that was a good one. Our text for today is Mark chapter 4. We begin with verse 35 and we read through the first verse of chapter 5. Mark 4, 35. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And may God bless the reading of his word this morning. I've been hearing a lot recently about a thing called artificial intelligence, AI for short. Artificial intelligence is defined as intelligence demonstrated by machines in contrast to intelligence demonstrated by humans or even by animals. Some examples of artificial intelligence computers, robots, self-driving cars, self-directing drones. Artificial intelligence is already a part of our lives. It's being used by the military. It's used in healthcare, in the medical world. It's used in manufacturing, banking, agriculture, and on and on we could go. It's also used in uh, computers playing the world champion at chess and beating him. And it's also used in computers playing the best Jeopardy players and beating them. Now, they invited me to come, but I didn't have time. I just couldn't work it in. But I use that introduction to point to this. Where this artificial intelligence will lead and how it will wind up, anybody's guess. And I'm not running it down or being critical of it, but there's a thing that I call authentic intelligence, actual intelligence. It's intelligence that you don't get from a machine. It's intelligence that you get from life. And it's the intelligence that you get from the storm of life. Authentic, actual intelligence that is best learned by us and it's best taught to us in the storms. And in the storm we just read about, I want to give you four examples of what I call authentic intelligence. And as you'll see, you don't get these four from any machine. I don't care how smart the machine is. The first lesson is, life is stormy. Life is stormy. The disciples and Jesus are sailing across the sea. Everything is okie-dokie and hunky-dory. Lovey-dovey. The stars are out. The sea is calm. Life is good. Another day in paradise. And then in verse 37, all of a sudden, out of the blue, out of nowhere, a great windstorm arose, the waves beat into the boat, and the boat filled with water. And folks, if that's not an accurate description of life on earth, I don't know what is. Our life is going well. Things are good. Stars are out. The sea is calm. And then, boom, the storm hits. 
the waves beat us and our boat begins to fill up. The storm may hit us in our family and home. The storm may hit us at work. The storm might hit us at school. The storm could hit us at the courthouse. The storm could even hit us at the ball field. And the storm could hit us at church. The storm may hit us at the doctor's office, the hospital, the nursing home, or the funeral home. My point is simply this, there is no way to sail the sea of life and not get hit by storms, and not get beat up by storms, and not get soaked by storms. The storms of life are unavoidable and inescapable. The storms of life are sure and certain to find us, and when they find us, they try to flood us. There is no one or no thing that can exempt and exclude us from the storms of life. Life is stormy, and you don't get that from a machine. You get that from life. Second example, life is slanted. Life is slanted. What do I mean by that? I mean life is not fair. Life is not square. Life is not on a plumb or level. Look at these disciples. They're not doing one thing wrong. They're not doing one thing bad. They're not doing anything sinful or harmful. In fact, they are obeying Jesus. Whose idea was it for them to take this trip in the first place? It was Jesus' idea. These disciples are in the center of the Lord's will. And where has it gotten them? In the center of a storm. Life wasn't fair to these men. And life isn't fair to us. Life is slanted. It's out of joint. It's out of kilter. Some examples... A God-fearing person has a horrible disease while some pagan heathen thug is healthy as a horse. The tornado hits the town, destroys the church house, doesn't touch the beer joint. The law-abiding citizen drives a 15-year-old car. The dope pusher drives a brand new BMW. The honest politician gets defeated, the crooked politician wins. The honest coach loses and gets fired, the cheating coach wins and gets a raise. Good people get the shaft, bad people get the gold mine. The drunk driver kills and maims an innocent family, while the drunk driver walks away without a single scratch. Bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. Is it fair? No. Is it square? No. It's slanted, and it's unfair. The only level ground in life that I find is at the foot of the cross. The only one. This world, however, is slanted. And you don't learn that from a machine. You learn that from life. Third example, the Lord is sufficient. The Lord is sufficient. Look at what Jesus did in verse 39. He arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And what happened? The wind ceased and there was a great calm. The power and strength of Jesus Christ was sufficient to deal with their storm. And the same holds true for us. The power and strength of Jesus Christ is sufficient to deal with our storms. The stormy seas and winds, the slanted waves, they're too much for us folks, but not for him. He's sufficient to deal with our physical storms, our occupational storms, our educational storms, our financial storms, our family and home storms, and most of all, our spiritual storms. No wind is too high for him. No wave is too choppy for him. And no sea is too rough for him. If you watch the Weather Channel, you know they have certain people on their crews they call the storm experts. 
They're the experts at tracking and forecasting storms. Well, the real storm expert is Jesus Christ, the master of the sea. He is sufficient to handle and deal with any and all of our storms. And folks, he proved it in the biggest storm that has ever been recorded. Do you know which storm that was? It wasn't Hurricane Katrina. It was Hurricane Calvary. He handled that storm. And if he handled that storm, he can handle any and all of our storms. Jesus was sufficient for their storm. He's sufficient for our storm. And you don't learn that from a machine. You learn that from life. And then there's a fourth example. The landing is safe. The landing is safe. Verse 35, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. Did they make it to the other side? Verse 1 of chapter 5, they came to the other side. Yes, indeed, they made it. Oh, the trip was stormy. The trip was slanted. But because the Lord was sufficient, the landing was safe. They made it safe and sound to the other side. And as we noted earlier, our trip through life is stormy. Our trip through life is slanted. But our landing will be safe. We will make it to the other side. And on the other side in heaven, as the Bible tells us, there is no more sea. And if there's no more sea, that means there's no more storms. And if there's no more storms, that means there's no more slanting. The landing will be safe. And you don't learn that from a machine. You learn it from life. Now, you look at those four. The first three are set. The first three are a given. They're not optional. They are reality. They're facts of life. But number four is optional. Number four is up to you. You have a choice. You have a say. You have a vote in number four. Notice what verse 36 said. The disciples took him, Jesus, along in the boat. If Jesus had not been in that boat with those disciples, do you think they would have made it to the other side? Well, of course not. And my friend, neither will you make it to the other side if Jesus Christ is not in your boat as your Savior and Lord. Now Jesus wants to take you to the other side, just like he did those disciples. And he will take you to the other side if you invite him into your boat. If you invite him into your life, into your heart, and allow him to be your Savior and Lord. Those four facts right there, you don't get them from any machine. They come from life, and they come from the storms of life. Don't sail through life without Jesus in your boat. You won't make it. You won't make it. And again, that's not artificial intelligence. That's authentic and actual intelligence. 